language only ukrainians that's all that if you are black you should walk we have to go to the root we have to go to the cause we want freedom by any means necessary we want justice by any means necessary the video of today i've made it exclusively for the black community but don't worry if you are not black you can still stay and watch i welcome you all with my whole heart Watch, don't go anywhere. You as a black person, I'm here to ask you this question. How much do you know about yourself? Today's video, we are going to discuss that. We are going to discuss your work as a black person. Your place in the world as a black person. It seems as though everywhere Africans or Afro-descended people are, no matter the geographical location, they've experienced some form of oppression. Just like the persecution of the Jews in the days of the Bible and modern recent times, it turns out that it's not only the Jews who are being persecuted, but a community of individuals with distinctly higher melanin concentration and adaptive mechanisms enables them to provide the intense rays of sunlight owing to their geographical blessing. The searing heat, the desert wind. These people were, are, and if not taken care of, will still be persecuted. We are students! We are students! This place goes by many names. Some call it the Black Continent. Some call it the Cradle of Mankind. Some call it the Pillar of Civilization. I call it my home. To be more specific, I come from the eastern part of this special continent and we are, we are going to discuss a lot on this continent. Stay tuned. The region of West Africa from which Kunta Kinte supposedly came was one of the great slave trading regions of the continent. Slavery, the treatment of human beings as property deprived of personal rights, has occurred in many forms throughout the world. But one institution stands out for both its global scale and its lasting legacy the Atlantic slave trade. Also, the problem of persecution of the black people has a beginning. Late 15th to the mid 19th century and spanning three continents, forcibly brought more than 10 million Africans to the Americas. The impact it would leave affected not only these slaves and their descendants, but the economies and histories of large parts of the world. It began the very first time the first African was kidnapped in the shores of the Atlantic in West Africa by the white man to go and work in his colonial lands. Most of us died in this routine. The routine is commonly known as the transatlantic trade. Yes, slaves were the main commodity in this trade. Atlantic slave trade began in the late 1400s with Portuguese colonies in West Africa and Spanish settlement of the Americas shortly after. Unlike what we're being told in the history textbooks, did you know that the first country to ever start a slave trade was Spain? Yes, they even offered their own ship to go and do the trade. Here is the ship. And also, other countries would include Portugal, Germany, France, and even the Netherlands. By then, German was not German, but it was called Prussia. After Columbus' invasion of the Americas, yes, not discovering the invasions, you cannot discover a country with people inside. The white man faced resistance from the inhabitants, whom we all know as the Red Indians. So, the white man came to Africa in order to have a source of labor that would work in their farms back in the Americas. Slaves were taken from the western part of Africa to the Americas to work on the farmlands. The produce from the farmlands was taken to Europe for manufacture and refineries, and then the produce was then sent back to Africa. You see, Africa was again becoming the marketplace, and this cycle has not ended. It's just you to open up your eyes and see. 
a result of the desire for money and greed, the black man has faced a lot of persecution, particularly in the United States of America. Yes, up until now. Also other places will include South Africa. We all know that South Africa is a multiracial country. Also, the South Africans just got their independence just here in 1994. With Nelson Mandela being the first black president in South Africa, the very homeland of the Africans. It has become the nominate cultural narrative that black race or the Africans or the Negroids are an inferior race. This is something that they have injected into our mind and created what we call social constructionism, which is a very toxic thing in the minds of Indian Negroids. And we are here to be toxic. The false narrative seems to be woven in the social fabric and the DNA of the subject and the object of this false narration. Maybe Lamek, here he is, was not shown. Characteristics acquired from the environment can be passed to the offspring. Yes, think with me this way. False narrative associated with racial segregation has been successfully adopted from the environment and has been passed to the offsprings of the subject and objects of the oppression and this is what we experience today. You as a black child, let us look at some of the achievements your ancestors have made. Some of the achievements we are not told in the media because the media is never true. The media shows us what it needs to show. Here is something to change your mind. I'd like to call it the game changer. According to the Forbes magazine in 2015, it was proclaimed that Mansa Musa, ruler of the West African Empire of Mali, was the richest man who ever lived on earth. Do you know what that means? The current economy, his net worth was $400 billion. As of 2015, Bill Gates was the richest man and his net worth was just $81.8 billion. You see, that's such a big gap. No need for me to explain, but we all know that wealth is equal to power. Among us are the DNA of the Egyptians, the great Egyptians. And did you know that from the Egyptian hieroglyphics is when the first alphabet was invented? The alphabet as we know it today was invented from the Egyptian hieroglyphics and we still contain that DNA within us. It's in ourselves, Africans. There's so much about us. Just first. Ethiopia is the only African country with its own alphabet. The Ethiopic alphabet is the world's oldest living alphabet and it contains 345 letters. But some of I, some of us might ask, how is alphabet an important thing? Well, let me tell you this. The first signifier of civilization is the mode of communication. See, one generation has to be born, the rest has to be followed. Now, how do we carry our knowledge from this generation to the other one? It's by writings. We write our knowledge down and pass it to the offsprings. That's why the alphabet is a very important thing. The older it is, the greater it shows how civilized that community was. The African continent has the largest reserve of precious metals which is over 40% of gold, 60% of cobalt, and 90% of platinum. Almost half of all the gold ever mined in the whole world was mined in one place in Africa called the Witwatersrand. The Witwatersrand is located in South Africa. Period in the 1930s when there was a great economic depression and mass unemployment, commonly known as the Great Depression, did not affect our ancestors because our ancestors were not dependent on the banks they were dependent on themselves and their fields and this is why the great depression never attacked us this is because we africans we had faith in our formula of agriculture when the whole world was starving africa was not there is so much about africans that are not covered i want this video not to be long than nine minutes and so if you request, I can make another video about the inventions made by Africans that we are not told. Your value is when you step into your awareness of self. Your worth is when you understand your roots and culture. Understand that you are from a 
great background. We are from a highly civilized community. You are not just anybody. You are an African. Be proud to be one. Because there is only one black continent.